Now Jesus is the only way. He's the only name you'll hear on that day. What price will you bring when you stand before the King? Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. And he walked upon the water one sweet day. He healed the blind and lame. All glory to his name. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. He's the truth and the life I'm here to say. He gave his life for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is the only way. What do you say? He's the only way, folks. Amen. I'm happy, can't you see? My Savior's pardon me. He's taken all my sins away. I'd life eternally. A million years from now. A million years from now. I'll still have Jesus for my friend. A million years from now. He washed me in his blood, he washed me in his blood, he changed my heart and renewed my mind, oh what a cleansing flood, a million years from now, a million years from now, I'll still have Jesus for my friend. A million years from now In the twinkling of an eye I'll meet him in the sky I'll ride the clouds with the angels there In the twinkling of an eye A million years from now A million years from now I'll still have Jesus for my friend a million years from now. I know the promises of God are really true. And I'm going to a city that's brand new.
they get me down and no one seems to care and the weight of it is more than i can bear i call on jesus come and set me free Well, praise the Lord, and we'll open up our Bibles this morning to the Gospel of John in chapter 15, and uh, we'll start with verse 1. We've been doing a study in the Gospel of John. We're going to continue this, even though the coronavirus has uh, kind of slowed down the movement in the churches and uh, uh, stopped us from uh, uh, congregating, but uh, we're hopefully that we'll get over this and we'll continue in the meantime, we haven't lost our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus, and we haven't uh, forgotten the great promises that he has made. And uh, this uh, particular lesson and the lessons that I'm bringing is that we do not forget who Jesus is. Jesus is the son of the living God. He is God himself. He is the creator of heaven. Now, as we begin this morning, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to come on this uh, programming or broadcasting and to present the word of God, this word of encouragement to the peoples. Lord, help us with this. And we ask this in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, Amen and amen. Now chapter 15. <clears throat> I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I'm going to stop right there. That's the first uh, uh, four verses. And uh, we look at the introduction to this, and we see that uh, Jesus says, I am the true vine. I love that idea. He said uh, that he was the good shepherd also. And we'll be reading about that. But here he says, I am the true vine. What is this telling us? It's telling us that there is, in fact, a false vine. There are false vines. There are vines that seem to be true vines, but they're not the true vine. Any vine that is not in Jesus Christ is not the true vine. Uh, and it says here that uh, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. This word husbandman is an old term meaning like a farmer he is the one who uh, does the who gets his hands dirty so to speak he's he's the one who does the work and the husbandman here is uh, God the father <clears throat> and uh, so ch verse 2 says every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Recently, I've been working on my grapevines. And grapevines, you know, uh, you, you, you put them up out of the ground, and they have little buds on them. And then the buds will grow into vines, and then the vines will produce a fruit. So uh, as the husbandman of those vines, I have to cut vines 
and I, what I will do is as the vine comes up and it begins to branch off, I will pick two or three buds and then anything beyond that, I'll cut it off. All right, I cut it off because if you have too many uh, branches and too many buds, then your fruit will be small. It won't be as good. So you have to, you have, if you want good fruit, you have to cut off the parts that are no good and uh, that are going to draw the sap of that tree. It's going to draw the energy of that tree and you won't be able to get or produce a good fruit. So you've got two or three good ones. And now as the season comes along, this, these will develop into grapes. Now as they are like little, they're like little seeds on the, on the uh, vines there, you take your hands and you, you uh, rub down with your hands a little bit and, and that kind of, that does the work of the bee too. It pollinates that, that area. And then you look at it and there are some, you, you wanna thin out that a little bit so you thin it out and so that you got a, a nice little cluster there, you know, coming up. And as the, as the season goes on and as the grape begins to develop, You'll look at it again, and there might be some that are not right, so you pick them off and you make a nice, you gotta watch them and you gotta keep them if you want a nice cluster of vase, uh, of uh, uh, grapes, you know? And, and this is the lesson that we get from God's word here is how God operates in our life, how it is God who will do these things in our life. There are things in our life that that are unproductive. There are things in our life that uh, we do, you know, every one of us, do we do these things and, and uh, it takes away, it draws the energy from the good fruit that God wants produced. And so God comes along and he will take those things out of your life. And, and oftentimes we struggle with it. We don't want to give it up. We want to keep that thing it's our entertainment it's our it's our uh, how we spend our time it it's a uh, it might be a, a friend it might be a, a a game today these these young people they play these games you know and it takes up all of their time and all of their energies and and they're not unproductive they're unproductive in the things in raising families they're unproductive with their children they're unproductive with these things and they don't have time for God. They have time for everything except for the things that they should have. And so God comes along and he will cut off some of these things out of our life. And you find that those things that you once loved, those things you once had, they, they, they've gone out of your life. And then the fruit itself, how God begins to, to uh, uh, make the cluster of the fruit that, that comes along in your life, that how God is going to, to start using things in your life and picking out little things, you know, in our testimony that are not productive or that are counterproductive, I should say. And God will take those things out of our life. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we have a testimony for the Lord and it, we make this big, long story. And it's so hard for some of us, some of us, are so, uh, whew, how can I say it? Uh, there's a word that I use, I always used it with my children, and the word is verbiage. And you know, you got too much verbiage and too much, uh, too many weeds in your language. And, and it, it actually is distracting from the message, you know? And I like the uh, uh, scripture where uh, the blind man, and the blind man was brought before the Pharisees and uh, and they began to question him as to how he gained his sight back. And uh, finally he said to them, he says, hey, once I was blind and now I see. What a wonderful testimony, you know, and we should learn from that, that make our testimony, uh, that God, God is gonna do the work. God is going to remind you, okay, now you consciously give a testimony and you watch what you say and how you say it, that it, uh, number one, that it, it, that it brings honor and glory to Christ, not you, okay? It must bring glory to you. If you start telling people of how good you are and uh, how you uh, manage to uh, do this and that and the other, 
that doesn't bring honor to the Lord. Okay, so a simple testimony. Once I was blind, and now I see. And God will do the work. God is going to, uh, uh, here it says that every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And that fruit that we want is that fruit of the Spirit of God. And we know that, uh, you know, that we have a list of those things that we call the fruit of the Spirit. But I would like to concentrate uh, just this day on three of the first three things that are mentioned there. And it is uh, love, joy, and peace. Love, joy, and peace. Love first. Love for our uh, uh, God. Love for our uh, Creator and our uh, uh, supreme almighty God, that we love him and we love uh, being in his presence and we love his help and we love the encouragement that we receive for him. We love his promises. We love everything that God has for us, you know? And then secondly, that we love one another. For if you don't love one another and you don't care about one another, then, you know, what? What good is it? What are you doing? Huh? And then thirdly, it even says that we have to love our enemies. There's, the love has, to, love has to, to go out. It has to be a part of your, it, it, it emits from you. It comes out from you, this love, you know. So that means that, uh, uh, you know, that any foul language uh, about somebody or any uh, discouraging words about somebody, we got to be careful with it, you know, be very careful. Even those that we say, well, you know, I don't, that, I, I don't want to be around. Oh, oh that, ah, ah, when he comes around. We have to be careful with that. Find some way to help somebody and love somebody. Keep that love growing. And knowing that God is going to uh, encourage you in that sense. I think that love is lacking a great deal in our church today. Isn't that something? Huh? Okay, so then it says love, joy. Joy is second. Joy that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, some of us have that uh, uh, 20 minutes after 7 look, you know. I got that, our frown is a, we're always down. Oh, woe is me. I've got these problems, you know. Uh, we have to learn that there is a joy in the things of God, the joy and the promises of God. No matter how discouraged you may seem in this life uh, and the pains and the aches that we have, and those pains and aches are part of life. They're part of living. And it's a joy to live in this life and to, be, to have been created and to, be, ha, to have been uh, given the opportunity to live forever in the kingdom of God. Isn't that a wonderful? wonderful joy out of knowing that and then the promises of God and how God has promised us he said that I'm going away but I'll come back again and I'll receive you and and uh, you'll become part of me and you'll never be away from me I'll be with you till the ends of the world I'll always be with you what a great joy that we should have over that promise and then peace now not the peace that the world gives but the peace that God would give us, okay? And the, that peace of mind gives us uh, peace over fear. Fear of death, fear of destruction. We have nothing to fear. You know, I tell people, you know, they say, well, if I become a Christian, I'll have bad things happening in my life. Oh, you don't have any bad things happening in your life? Uh, the rain... The Bible says that God allows or lets the rain fall upon the righteous as well as the wicked. So that in this life we will have things that happen to us. We'll lose our loved ones eventually because everybody in this life has got to leave this life. Uh, like that old uh, Hank Williams song, it says, I'll never get out of this world alive. You're not going to get out of this world alive. Uh, meaning that this old life is not going to get out. But we're going to get out of this life with life. We're going to get a new life in Christ. Isn't that wonderful? And so we should have the peace of God in our life. And those three joys right there are the uh, things that we should have. Then, of course, uh, the other, uh, there are others, but the one that I uh, emphasize beyond that is 
this uh, this uh, patience that we need and uh, uh, to be able to put up with what's going on in the in our life and in the lives of others around us to have patience have that patience of God in your life you know that you know God has plenty of reasons to destroy mankind he could just wipe us off the face of the earth for our sins and for our disobedience and for our going away from him you know but he's patient the Bible says he's very patient and long-suffering and not willing that any should perish but that all come to repentance and so God uh, uh, cleans the vine and he he uh, uh, makes the fruit right in our life and now we'll go on to verse uh, 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 3 it says now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you abide in me verse 4 abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except ye abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me now I want to I want to make an emphasis here that that the vine you know you have a vine and then you have branches that come off the vine and uh, the the vine is Jesus Christ the vine is not the church the 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 church grows off from the vine all of the members of the church the the individuals they they are off from the main vine which is Christ Christ is the vine all right and he's divine <laughs> okay uh, uh, Except ye abide in me, uh, uh, except ye abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches, ye. The, let's, let's get this clear, let's get this clear. The vine is not the church. You know, some people think, oh, I have to belong to that church. I have to belong to their, their uh, I have to get, planted in the church you don't get planted in the church you get planted in Christ and you become part of the church okay he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing and so the nourishment that we produce the fruit of God love joy and peace it comes from the vine it, it doesn't come from our own abilities to love to have joy and peace because you could have uh, love for those that love you and you could have love for those that help you you could have love even for those who are desperate and you feel sorry for them you know and uh, there are many people in the world who have that kind of love you know but the kind of love that God produces comes from him and that love is a love that we as human beings we can't have it except it come through and come to him the the joy and the peace you know sometimes people are very happy you know they win the lottery or something or they they've uh they they just got married or they just got a new job and they're so happy but then after a while uh the 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 woes come to them you know but if you have the joy of the Lord in your life then there is no reason for you to have not have that joy every day because every time we open the Word of God we read about the promises of God and every time we gather together we sing about the promises of God and we we speak to each other about the promises of God and about the joy of the Lord and so it's something that we have every day all day long amen and now uh, again here let me uh, read verse 6 now if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is and withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned this is a this is a, a, a scripture people don't like to really concentrate on but it says if a, if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and, and remember how I said that uh, the husbandman or the farmer would take the, the vines and he trims them, you know, he trims them off. Those vines that are not producing, cuts them off. And what do we do with them? Well, I'll tell you what I do with my branches. They go into a fire and I burn them up, get rid of them. 
I don't, I don't replant them. I don't want another branch growing in the ground that's not going to produce anything anyway. So I throw them in the fire. And so here it says that if a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them, cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And so this is the outcome of those who do not produce the fruit that I just was uh, speaking of here this morning. And you, you could fake that uh, uh, fruit. You could fake it for a while. You could fake the love. You could fake the joy and the peace in your life. But there's no reason to do that when you can have the real thing. You could have the real love and the joy of peace of God in your life if you just uh, humble yourself before God and repent of your sins and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life. Just ask him to come in and watch what happens to your life after that. You'll still have some problems in your life probably, but now you've got the Lord Jesus who's going to help you and you're going to get through those things, all right? Praise the Lord. He came into my heart and made me Eternal life and, and Jesus, Jesus is my goal. Now my name is written on that roll. Cause I've got resurrection living in my soul. I've got resurrection living in my soul. I've got resurrection living in my soul. Now my name is written on that roll. Cause I've got resurrection living in my soul He's the one who took my sin away When he suffered on the cross that day Now my name is written on that roll Cause I've got resurrection living in my soul I've got resurrection living in my soul. I've got resurrection living in my soul. Now my name is written on that roll. Cause I've got resurrection living in my soul. I've got resurrection living in my soul. I've got resurrection living in my soul. Now my name is written on that roll. Cause I've got resurrection living in my soul. Is your heart set on things heavenly? Are you sold out to Jesus thoroughly? friends each day do you tell them he's the way is your heart set on things heavenly as we pilgrim through this land of many trials often you may stumble I have uh, come to know uh, Pastor Din of the Shiloh Bible Church, and uh, uh, he uh, has uh, 
the opportunity to broadcast a, a short message not only to his people but to the people of this community and if we go on YouTube it's to the whole world you know and so uh, uh, I am going to uh, present uh, Pastor Emmert Din with his message for the day so let's listen Praise all right God. let's pray our Heavenly Father of a great Almighty God we come to thee in the holy, precious, almighty, everlasting name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we praise thee, we adore thee, Lord, we bless thee. You are almighty, sovereign God who controls this whole universe. Father, we pray for our brothers, sisters throughout the world. Thy almighty hand be with them, Lord, protect them, watch over them in this virus. And Father, we pray, have mercy on our countries. Thy almighty hand be there, Lord. As we go into thy word, speak to us today. Minister unto us. Let thy Holy Spirit give us your message. Thy almighty name be exalted. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we've been passing through this situation, we all are facing difficulties and situations of this virus. We are to overcome by our faith. And I will bring 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7 to start with. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold. That perish through it be tried with fire. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ. He says trial of your faith is much more precious than gold which is tried in the fire. That's how God see our faith in this situation, how we live before our Lord. He wants us to stand on our faith that our Lord is in control. He will take care of everything. He has a purpose. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. He says our faith is the victory. To overcome the world. And I want to encourage you. In this situation. That be strong in faith. Our Lord is in control. And he will take care of every situation. No matter what. Sometimes it try to make us. Disheartened. But do not be disheartened. You remember the story in Joshua chapter 6, God gave Joshua the leadership and he was to bring Israel to their land and God said, go and tell the priest to lift up the Ark of Covenant, stand in the water of Jordan, that is in chapter 3, verse 19, stand in the water of Jordan, chapter 3, verse 9 to 11, and Jordan will be Parted. 
And they stood in the water, and water was parted, and whole nation went through it. Joshua, he did it what God told him to do. And he did not question God. Lord, why? Why I should do this? No. He did not question God. He did what God told him to do. Now they came to first challenge, and that was Jericho. And Jericho was a strong city built with strong walls around. And God gave them three things. God said, I want you to take Ark of Covenant front of you. Keep looking at Ark of Covenant. The second thing, the priest were to blow the horn, blow the trumpet. And the third thing was, all people are to shout. And they had to do seven days. Now, first day they went, nothing happened. Second day they went, nothing happened. They had to do seven days. That means they had to obey God, keep doing, keep doing. You cannot say, oh, it has not happened today. It has not happened other day. It is not. God has his time. Seven days they had to go around. What that symbolized? That symbolized Ark of Covenant symbolized Lord Jesus Christ. He has the presence of God. We are to put him first, front of our eyes. We are to keep putting him front of our eyes. Doesn't matter what situation come, doesn't matter how hard the situation is, Lord Jesus Christ is conqueror. And you are conqueror in Christ Jesus. That is in Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. We are made conqueror in Christ Jesus. So they are to do first thing that they were to keep Lord Jesus Christ front of their eyes. That's what your responsibility is. It says Hebrew chapter 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus, the author of our faith, author and finisher of our faith. So that's what we are to look at. Look at Lord Jesus Christ. The second thing what we are to do, we are to testify. Priests were to blow the horn. You are to testify. You have to be a witness of Lord Jesus Christ. 
He said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and uttermost part of the world. Lord Jesus Christ has appointed you and me to be witness for him. The third thing is that they were to shout loud victory of Jehovah. That means you have to obey whatever he has said. It is you have to obey. No matter how much time it's going to take, he is going to take care of you in this situation and he will handle all the situation God goes around. So we are to depend on his covenant because he never forget his covenant and he said in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, the work he has started in you he will finish. It is he who will finish that work, what he has started in you. Nothing can touch you until he allows it. But he tests your faith. Our faith, which is tested, it does marvelous things First thing what it does when God tests our faith, it satisfies his heart. That we are born of God and we believe in him. And whoever accepts Lord Jesus Christ as his savior, they have faith and they are to be tested if that faith is real or not, it is to be proven. And when God tests that faith, he is satisfied. Yes, you are my child. The second reason why he tests our faith, that is that he, that the mouth of Satan may be stopped. Because devil, he tried to accuse us. He tried to bring all kinds of trouble and difficulties front of God's people. And we are to remember that our faith is tested. That Satan can be stopped. He cannot do anything when you believe in God. So that's another thing we are to remember that faith is going to be tested and God wants to be satisfied through your life. And third thing why our faith is tested, that we may grow in God. If our faith is not tested, no Christian will grow in the Lord. And that's why it is, there's a challenge is going to be there. And this is the challenge what we see. And this is the time that we are to stand on our faith. Be strong in the Lord. And he will take care of every situation. So we are to grow. And that when your faith is proven, it makes you grow and give you another courage to do. And fourth reason why our faith is tested, that we may help other people. When our faith is tested, we are equipped to help other people. If our faith is not tested, 
we cannot help other people. So you are to be tested before we can help other people. And that's the reason. And tested faith has a relationship with the victory. You want to be victor in Christ Jesus, your faith is going to be tested. And that's why he says, our faith is precious than gold. Gold which is tried in the fire and your faith is tested in Christ Jesus. And that's why it is important that uh, we are, our faith has to be tested that what is the our faith? I want to share with you the testimony what Lord has done in our life We bought a house and we were coming to see the house and passed by this lot and I asked my wife, I said, if Lord gave me this lot, we will build a church. The church we were in, that was sold and uh, now we were meeting in the airport inn and uh, Lord brought this up and I called the people, the owner, and the owner said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to build a church. And they said, don't buy this lot because the water level is too high. And I asked, Lord will take care of that. And he said, why don't you talk to your attorney and then call us back. I talked to my attorney and attorney says, don't buy this lot because water level is too high. And I said, Lord will take care of that. I bought the lot and uh, called the engineer. He was to dig three places. He dug two places and failed and he dug the third place, it passed. He says, you can build. And now I had a, a permit to build. And Lord did great things to do his work. You have to walk by faith. And when we have a permit, McDonald came, McDonald wanted to buy and they offered us 200,000 for this lot. And I said, no, we are to build a church here. And we had only $36 in the account. And we started building. With $36, I ordered the foundation. Company came, they put the foundation in. By the time they sent their bill, Lord brought the money in and we paid their bill. We were left with $39. Now, how God works. Now we have foundations. Our county came and they said, we need a strip of your land to make this intersection big. I said, okay, what will you do to us? And they said, we will give you $3,500. County gave us $3,500 for the strip. Three days later they came, they said, we will build your two entrances too. So county built our two entrances and $3,500 I took to the 84 lumber and gave it to them and we brought all the lumbers, whatever we needed. One construction man, he was my friend, he stood for me. He said, if he can't pay, I will pay. So we brought all the lumbers. People came from Pennsylvania, from New York to build the walls. Now we had to put the trusses on 
and trusses were 60 feet wide and they said you have to call the crane I called the crane man and he said I need money if you can give me money right after when we finish I can come I said okay when you finish we will give you the money we started Saturday morning and it was the clouds were just to pour older man came from the church and he says we have to make the wall straight first we start making walls straight and clouds were just to pour the water and a crane man got mad he says you have wasted my day I have to come back again to finish I said don't worry we will not have a rain it was raining around us we did not have a rain on the spot we finished 730 and I asked the treasurer give the money whatever he wants and he says I am not taking a penny from this place I didn't have or I have not seen like this he took his crane he is gone now we had to put the shingles up we put the plywood strung and we had to put the shingles up shingle pallets were too heavy our young boys they could not bring it up Amish man came with forklift crane I don't know where he came from but all he said I am going to put these pallets up and he put all the pallets up we put all the shingles and now roof is ready we could work inside it was in November it was cold and uh, one man called me from downtown um, from route 57 and he said I have sold my building to Eckerd and I have two furnaces in that building if you want them we went we brought those two furnaces we put in the building now we have a uh, heat we could work inside we could put insulation sheet rock paint and everything and then a man called me from downtown Syracuse he said I have closed my business I have full garage of doors if you want doors we went we brought all the doors whatever we needed two doors I could not find they were odd size exit door and uh, one man called me from Malone next to Canada and he said I have from state nursing home he is calling me from he said I have two door of this size if you need them and that's the size I was looking for I went to Home Depot I went to Hackinger I could not find but look how Lord provides I drove three and a half hour pick up the doors came back and put the doors on now we have doors ready building is ready but we don't have parking lot the company who was which was working Centero was working on the intersection they were parking their trucks and cars on our lot they said in return we will build your parking lot they brought the stone they brought the roller they built our parking lot God built our church building for $36 your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is able to remove the mountains that's what he said Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 if you have a faith like a mustard seed you can move the mountain and that's what Lord is calling us for 
live by faith, not by sight. Your faith is strong, moving the mountain. And be strong. Situation can be challenged. And we are to be trusted. And we are to trust our Lord Jesus Christ. Our tested faith can glorify him and give him all the glory. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our great Almighty God, we come to thee in the holy, precious, almighty, everlasting name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we praise thee, we adore thee, Lord, we bless thee for thy almighty hand who does wonders. Father, we commit ourselves into thy almighty hand. And Father, we pray for our country. Thy almighty hand be upon this country. Thy almighty power may work. Raise many sons and daughters in your kingdom that they may walk by faith and give glory and satisfy your heart. Father, we praise thee, Lord. We bless thee. We worship thee. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when we read our paper, there's trouble all around. War and famine plague us, and earthquakes shake the ground. They kill our little babies before they leave the womb. Prepare yourself, prepare yourself, he's coming very soon. Prepare yourself. It's later than you think. Prepare yourself. You're on the very brink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. Prepare yourself, prepare yourself. It's later than you think. Now the master prophesied about these days so dark. He said, remember Noah and why he built the ark. The evil that you're seeing is only one more sign. Prepare yourself, prepare yourself, your soul is on the line. Prepare yourself, it's later than you think. Prepare yourself, you're on the very brink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. Prepare yourself, prepare yourself, it's later than you Now Jesus is the only way, He's the only name you'll hear on that day. What price will you bring when you stand before the King? Jesus is the only way.
He's the only way, folks. Amen.